Hi, we're here with Kenneth McKenzie, owner of Florentine Gardens, Hollywood Landmark. And Kenneth, it has been a long story for Florentine Gardens to stay here the way it is. Tell us about it. Well, I, I acquired this, uh, this building, this landmark, let's say, 1979. And um, so then I reopened it as a nightclub restaurant. And then in about 2003, uh, I don't understand until now, but no, I do. And the city wanted uh, the property to build a fire station. And and I told them no, I didn't want to give it to them. But you know, I didn't, I didn't know what the power of the government, and they they use the what they call a power eminent domain. So if they need something, they just take it. They give you, they price the property, and they say this is your money and thank you. And I decided not to uh, to fight it. And people told me that I was wasting my time because you don't fight eminent domain. They, you know that you just don't do that. It won't work, and uh, even if you use lawyers or whatever. But then I, I start fighting anyways, and I say, no, it's not right, it's not right. And then um, at what point they offered me a lot of money. And I told them, no, because that's, that's not what, it's not about money. I know you're going to pay me, and they wanted to pay me well. They gave it to me in writing. I have a, I have a copy there. And uh, I say no, it's not about it's not about money. I feel that um, it was about discrimination really against Latinos because this was a popular. Uh, most of the patrons were Hispanic, mostly. A lot of people help all the different all the communities: Peruvians, South Americans, uh, Central Americans, Mexicans, Americans, and uh, had a lot of support. And um, it took four four years from 2003 to 2007, and at the end they. They left. They left us alone. They say they went someplace else. And um, um, Kenny, also I remember people saying, and even in the LA Times it says, um, South American care more about Hollywood. Hollywood means more to people in South America than people in here. How can you want to destroy a landmark? And we Peruvians are the ones who are fighting against that. We want to preserve this landmark, this Hollywood, this part of Hollywood history. Tell me, why did you acquire this and why did you move to Hollywood? Was this a dream? What drove you here? Well, it was always a, a wish or a dream to come to Hollywood. But um, it's not, at that time it wasn't easy, but then I got into a car accident. I was driving, riding in the, in the back of a motorcycle with a friend, and uh, I got in a car accident. I was, went to the hospital, and then they, they told my father that they, I didn't have a chance to make it there. They told my father, maybe in Germany or the USA, I might have a chance. So that's why we came, and we came to Hollywood, because my father's sister lived in Hollywood, and 1212 Cold Avenue. And um, so she, she arranged for the hospital, all that, and then anyway, I, I, I came out all right. So then when, after I came out of the hospital, I moved to her house on Cole Avenue, Cole and Fountain Avenue. That was my first residence. And uh, talking about Hollywood, um, South Americans and Peruvians or I always admired Hollywood since I was 14, 15 years old because of the movies. That's how, you know, we learn about Hollywood. And, and somehow, you know, we admire and love all the movie stars and Hollywood making all those movies. And uh, so, and I, I, I couldn't come before, but then by accident, the, the accident, uh, I don't know, it's, it was destiny. It was destiny, and it was a large uh, community, a Peruvian community in the Hollywood neighborhood. Right, that is uh, just about the area that is proposed for Peru Village. It's our Hollywood neighbor, neighborhood from that time, and you were one of them. Even you had like a club for cla for cars, and uh, yes. back in those times of the golden age of Hollywood, golden era. Yes, uh, to my surprise, my aunt and her husband, Peruvians, they live here in Hollywood, in, like I said, in Cold Avenue. But, but then to my surprise, a lot of Peruvians live in this area, around Vine, Vine Street, between Melrose and Sunset. 
And, um, and I met them by accident. I went to the, there's a public swimming pool in Cahuenga and San Monica Boulevard. And uh, so I went to the pool and I met a lot of Peruvians there. I was surprised. Yeah, it, was a, it was a lot of uh, Peruvian businesses too, and still some of them are still there. Yes. And also you were telling me about the cowboys in that area. They were like, it was like the Home Depot. It was incredible, right, in that, uh, mm -hmm. that Hollywood time. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Um, well, there were so many Peruvians in the area that we even started a club, a car club. And uh, so all the, guy, all the members, they had, you know, they had some old-fashioned car or classic car, and, uh, and our hangout was the, the Hollywood Rancho Market, the corner of Fountain and, Fountain and Vine Street. That was the hangout. That's, okay. That's what we used to get together. And then uh, that was at nighttime and evening. And daytime, the hangout was the Cahuenga Park. And then uh, your question again was? It was, um, you were telling me about also the cowboys, how they were in that area where you used to work in the oh, restaurant. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, my very first job in the United States was at Covers Kille Restaurant. It was in the corner of uh, Gower and Sunset Boulevard. It used to be, now it's Dennis Restaurant. That was my very, very first job. And uh, so in that corner also used to be, it's in this history, that, that were the, Extras, the work in the movies used to get together there every day, and the, the producer would go to the corner and pick them up for cowboys. So, you know, a bunch of guys that like to, you know. Uh, the Peruvian community was really part of it, and also you acquiring a landmark as the Florentine Gardens and fighting for it, mm -hmm. you know, for its preservation, along with the Peruvian community. That means a lot. It's, it's an honor. To me, it was an honor to... Uh, to be fighting for a, to, you know, to preserve a landmark. The, all the Hollywood movies start since the 20s bring uh, people from all over the world. And they tend to think that, you know, they all went to America. It's been uh, Latinos, uh, Europeans, Russians, uh, everything. Ima Sumac has a star in Hollywood and she was in the 1960s. Right, And is right. in um, Wilcox and Hollywood. So yeah, she was big here, our Peruvian uh, singer. Yeah, it's been many, many uh, Latino movie stars in Hollywood. Even Rodolfo Valentino, I think, was a Latino. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so next. we are here in this wonderful landmark, and you were telling me Marilyn Monroe, before she was named Marilyn Monroe, celebrated her first wedding here, right? Yes. At this very floor, was she dancing? Right. She was 16 years old. She, her first marriage was when she was 16 years old. Her name wasn't Marilyn Monroe yet. And uh, so I guess she got discovered here. After that, she just became Marilyn Monroe. And what about in that beautiful scenario? Who uh, were dancing uh, there? It was in there. It was in there. It wasn't in no, there? No, the, the stage used to be over there. Oh, wow. That was the, you see? Yeah. That's the structure there. Okay. You know, we, that's existing. Yeah. That's, that's the stage right there. Wow. It used to be the stage. Yeah. So and who were they, the chorus girls before they were even famous? Well, I had the magazine there, Yvonne De Carlos. She was a chorus girl there, just a, one of the dancers before she became a movie star. Betty Davis also was, was one of the chorus girls. Um, several, several. I, I cannot remember all of them. And not only that, you feel the energy in this place. It's not only all the biggest stars, but it's also the part of... Um, U.S. history, the soldiers, you know. Yes, right. They were getting here uh, for free as a thanking them right. for, for their service. Right. Like in a World War, right? Right, in the 40s, yes. Yes, yes. in the 40s. And they were coming here, their pictures and, you know. Yes. Did you hear a lot of stories about that time? Yes, um, a lot of movie stars used to come here as customers to hang out or see their friends dancing. It, it was a good place. It was a famous place. Yeah, this is landmarks, landmarks need to be preserved are part of U.S. history. It's not only Hollywood landmark, but it's U.S. history. So it's, it's amazing and it's great that people like you, a Peruvian-American, mm -hmm. a Peruvian immigrant, mm -hmm. came and decide to, to fight. And save this place. And save this place, and here we are, thanks to you, and thanks to the Peruvian community and everybody who helped you. Yes, yes, I, like I said, the Peruvian community, the South Americans, Central Americans, Mexico, Americans, I had a lot of support.
By the way, I, I visited you when you was doing the cleaning of Vine Street a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and um, I, you know, when I arrived, you was already you, all your friends and the group was cleaning the streets, and uh, it was emotional for me. I I, I cry. I, I had tears we coming. Saw it. Yeah, because uh, I I some believe it's very uh, uh, impressive what you guys you guys were doing, you know, sweeping, cleaning the street, and uh, it touched me. You uh. you were cleaning my neighborhood. <laughs> It's our neighborhood. Our neighborhood, yes. you know. We, we you know, want to really take pride and take care of it. You were helping to clean America. Yeah. You know. uh, we're here to revitalize Hollywood and LA. We wanted the golden era to come back in the, right. 19, in the 21st century. We need it to come back. The economy needs it and needs these group efforts to revitalize because there is so much that one business can do, but a community of businesses with the heart in the right place and with the love and passion for their area for the geographical area and the designation area. We can do a lot, a lot more. Yes, I think it's in our culture, the Peruvian culture, to save landmarks. By all means. Yes, it's, uh, that's, that's who we are. You know, like Machu Picchu, all those places in Peru, and the, the, the many, uh, Huacachina, many, many, it's many. Like uh, man. We, we... Unbelievable. That's in our genetic code. Ex ex That's in our genes. Right. We do not destroy landmarks. Landmarks right. are part of us. It's part of who we are. It's, exactly. They remind us of where we come from and where we're going. So for us, we take it seriously. And you are a living proof of that. Yes, you I am. You fought for this landmark to stay alive. And right. look where it is. It is still standing up here in Hollywood, one of the nightclubs of World War and a beautiful, extremely... Um, place, an uh, important place during the golden era of Hollywood. And it's still here, thanks to you. Yes, I'm moving here in 1962, and it's been 50 years now. I still live in Hollywood. That's great. I never live, all those 50 years I live in Hollywood. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.